Hello guys, in today's video I am answering all of your guys' questions about agents and the industry and acting and whatever, everything that kind of pertains to agents. So if you guys didn't see part one on me explaining how you can get an agent, go ahead and check that out. I will leave that somewhere linked right here. But this is part two where, again, I answer all of your questions and just wanted to give you guys a little intro because it does cut straight into it since I didn't know I was going to split the video. But yeah, love you guys and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Someone said, I don't know if you're gonna see this, but do they pay for everything when you get a role not in the place you live? Do they give you food, etc.? So, okay, good question. This, this kind of relates to an agent manager, but kind of off topic, but I'll still answer it. It really just does depend on the project that you get. For example, if I were to audition for a student film at like a local college or whatnot, they're probably not gonna fly you out if you live in Missouri to be in a Charlotte film that's taking place on college because it's low budget and there's no reason for them to do that. They're probably gonna just use local actors. But if it's something like Netflix or Hulu or Disney or something like huge, 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 yes, your agent and manager doesn't pay for you to do it, but the actual producers of the show and the actual show itself pays for you to do that kind of stuff. To answer your question, your agents and managers don't do it, but the actual production does. And that is for, again, and bigger, larger scale productions, not something local. Someone said, do you need a local agent? I really want to sign with Trisco, but they're in Montreal and I'm not. So I don't know much about the Canadian uh, acting entertainment industry, but I'm mostly knowledgeable on the US market for all that kind of stuff. But for Canada, I'm pretty sure it'd be the same thing, but I honestly have no idea. But I just really wanted to answer the, do you need a local agent? And I will just say from my experience, so when I was in New York City, I got signed to my first agency, which was just a strictly dance agency so they would only represent me for dance whether if that was on Broadway or in TV and film but they wouldn't represent me for uh, film and TV because that's not what they really did I've since dropped them and I wanted more and believed that I could get more so I let go of them and then I actually ended up re-signing in September to my agency now and they're located in New York City even though I am currently located in Charlotte and that's because I've already let them know that I lived in New York City before and that I'm about to I'm not gonna spoil anything. You guys will have to see in the future, but I haven't announced anything yet, but essentially I'm moving, kind of. Um, things are happening. Essentially, I know that I'm able to go kind of anywhere that I want to, you know, so they were open to signing me. But say you're in high school and you don't live in New York City or LA or Atlanta or anything like that, the chances of getting signed are lower unless your parents or you and whatever are willing to travel every single time that you get a job or a booking. So it really just does depend on the agency themselves and what they're looking for, but that's something that you can communicate with them. I know that my agency was taking people from wherever. It's just as long as you're kind of be there once COVID is over. But one thing that I will say is that COVID has the advantage of kind of getting signed find anywhere but you kind of have to be in those places afterward so kind of find the largest city near you and see if you can get represented in that area so for me uh if i was looking for local kind of things here i don't think i'd do charlotte so to speak but i would probably look at georgia and kind of the south carolina agencies because i know that there are some there but georgia mostly because it's closest like the closest biggest city you know someone said yes i really need to know where to look and i don't know which sites or emails are trustworthy i actually got tons of questions about how do you know if agents are legit how do you know they're not scamming you and whatever so i guess i'll kind of just cover all of this right now be careful about where you put your information and who you're submitting to i will link down below backstages directory and essentially that whole directory has a list of all of the legit agencies and managements and whatever and it also has like casting directors just kind of everything that you want and need to know so you can take a look through all of those i think there's like 800 or something also imdb on imdb you can again check check out who are your favorite actors, who are people that you kind of represent or like look like, um, and see if those agencies are looking for submissions, if they're looking for people. Also an agency, hello, is most definitely a scam if you are paying upfront. Real legit agencies, you do not have to pay upfront at all because they always take commission. So I actually got this question in my DMs the other day and someone was like, how do you pay your agent and manager? Like, is it really expensive? And it's not that it's expensive, but it's like, it's a cut of what you make. So you will always have money to pay your agents and managers because it's a cut from your job that you make. So say I book a job right now, it's I get paid $2,000, right? So $2,000, 10%, 
would go to my agent. So that's $200 would go to my agent. Another 10 to 15% would go to my manager and then all of the other money I get to keep. So that's kind of how paying your agent and manager works. I don't think people understand that. And they're like, well, I'm so scared to get an agent because I have to pay them. And it's like, no, you just pay them based off of the jobs that you get. Third, agents don't call you to say that they want to represent you unless you're just like someone huge in the industry. They don't just call you. So if you're getting calls from agency from agencies saying that they want to potentially represent you and whatever, and they kind of sound like they're selling you something, it's fake, it's a scam, don't believe it. Agencies don't have the time to call people that they don't know and it's just really as frank and upfront as that. So don't fall for and be naive to potential calls. I remember even when I was in New York City, I don't know how my number got to these places, but I would get calls all the time being like, hi, we're with blank blank um, agency or whatever and like we want to sign you. I'm like, what? Like you don't even know me. Like real agents like don't have the again don't have the time to call you someone said how much experience do you need um that's a really good question uh for me personally i went to a performing arts high school and so did she i love her so much the person who asked this question that was enough for me because i knew how to market myself and my training i knew how to show that my training has paid off and that it's actually working and that i can book them work a manager or an agency is not going to want to sign you or represent you if you don't know your stuff. I know some people who went to my performing arts high school and no tea, no shade, but it's like they never really got the hang of it or it was just like never really a passion for them. So of course they weren't going to put in as much energy to get signed and actually have the energy to be good at this craft. So for me, I mean, I literally moved to New York City and started auditioning like right off the bat for huge things, like right off the bat, whether if they were open calls or when, my, when I signed to my dance agency, the things that he sent me for and whatever. So some people don't need much experience and some people need a lot. So it really just does vary. But if you didn't go to a performing arts high school or didn't get training when you were younger and you are in the teenage age range and you kind of want experience or whatnot, it's just all about taking classes. So again, all the stuff that I said about researching classes, taking classes. If it's accessible and available to you, I say hop on it. So someone said, this is like so small, but people keep saying, look at the client list. Where is it? I am DB pro. Someone said, I'm in the Midwest. Would it be smart to get an agent that is based in LA or in New York city? So same thing that I mentioned earlier, it's kind of whatever works for you. And if you're willing to relocate, um, are you in high school? Are you in middle school? Are you older? And you're willing to just kind of go anywhere. Um, those are things that agencies want to know because they don't want to sign you when you live in the Midwest and you're not even willing to travel or do anything. Someone said, how much control does the agent have over your career and what do they do? So good question that I didn't even really answer that. And that's kind of important to know. So your agent is able to get you auditions that are probably not available to the public, first of all. So this would include again, auditions for like Netflix, Hulu, Disney, whatever, all the bigger production companies and whatnot. So your agents gets you those really good big auditions okay that's the first thing that they do second thing they also negotiate your contract so your agents legally are able to negotiate your contracts how much do you actually deserve all of that kind of stuff and just like really fight for you on your end and then they kind of secure those deals for you they also um, market you to tons of people just so that you're able to book work that's what an agent does so when you asked about how much control does the agent have over your career that's kind of a interesting question because managers more so have control but it's not really like control it's more so like guidance they only really control the things that you're kind of getting submitted for so that is why good communication is really really imperative when it comes to agencies and all that kind of stuff because you want to know that your agent is actually getting you good auditions and really marketing you well because otherwise then you just have an agent they're not really working for you you pay them 10 percent, and it's like well you didn't even help me get that job you know i would say that managers more so have control over your career in a sense that they guide you more and it's more personal of a relationship whereas agents represent hundreds of people and they kind of submit a lot of people for things whereas your manager is really like hands-on is like what do you need as an individual and all that kind of stuff and the last question that i'm going to answer someone said do you need demo reels and what if you don't have one hello editing me here to say that i actually got some new information about clips and demo reels and all that kind of stuff because i was in a clubhouse room so i'm just gonna go ahead and give you guys this information right here so essentially demo reels are actually not as important as you think they are unless you have really credible work already like you've been on tv like you've been in movies and whatever and then you can make that a demo reel but if you're just starting out don't try and make a demo reel 
you do like a student film or something like that, you should take clips of it where you're like the main feature person and then put that on your actor's access profile, your backstage, so that people can look at the clips. So clips are like 30 to 45 second little tidbits. So hopefully this helps and clears everything up because I know I definitely did not answer it in this. I personally had a really shitty demo reel, but I was also able to kind of prove myself because I knew someone that was signed to the agency that I'm currently signed with. And so I got an industry referral. I didn't even talk about this, but it's, it's even 10 times better, say if you know someone or you have a friend that's in an agency that can get you an industry referral. For example, being like, oh, my friend is interested in potentially signing to an agency. Can you give me an industry referral? So that would basically be me emailing my agency being like, hey, I actually have a friend that's really, really talented that would love to sign with you, um, all that kind of stuff. Because once it's industry referral, they, can, they trust me because I'm already with them. So trusting me to get them in the agency as well because I probably am recommending somebody good as opposed to just like someone random submitting. So it's really good to get an industry referral because the agency that I'm actually signed with right now, I've submitted through their portal many, many times. I'm pretty sure, I think I've submitted like three times, I think. They probably just didn't know me and didn't want to like continue further. But once I got that industry referral from someone that I knew that happened to be there, and I was like, why don't I just attempt to get this industry referral? And that's why networking is so important. It's like, just be a good human and be a nice person to work with so that everyone will be nice to you and essentially help you get to where you want to be. Otherwise, if you're just like the worst person ever, why would they give me an industry referral? Exactly. All that to say, is that I didn't need a demo reel, so to speak, because I just kind of sent them my material, sent them my headshot, my current resume, and then once they were interested after seeing my materials, they then told me to put something on tape. So they gave me sides. That's what my agency did, but the one that you're submitting for might not, but my agency sent me like a file of scripts. I filmed a self tape for that and then sent that in so that they could review on their end. And then that's when they offered me a contract. So that's how that works. I hope this video helped a ton. Again, highly, highly requested video. Do let me know other things that you may wanna know about the industry slash the headshot challenge, which would honestly be kind of fun. I'm interested in that. So if you guys are, comment that down below and I will be sure to get to that as fast as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Take care and I will see you guys on Sunday. Cause, oh yeah, I have a schedule now. Sunday and Thursdays. Sundays and Thursdays, period. Bye.